Hello, welcome to this lesson on temperature and resistance. There are three parts and this is part one. We'll be talking about metals, how their resistance changes with temperature, and we'll introduce a concept of the temperature coefficient of resistance. Parts two and three are separate. They'll be about semiconductors and superconductivity. Suppose we take a piece of metal wire. We could measure its resistance over a range of temperatures. And we could plot a graph of resistance versus temperature like this. Over a range of typical values, room temperature, a bit below, a bit above, we'll get a straight line or very nearly a straight line graph. So we can say the resistance is linearly dependent on the temperature. It's not proportional to the temperature, it doesn't go through the origin, the graph, but the resistance increases linearly with temperature. And we can ask why. Well, consider what happens when electrons flow through metal. The conduction electrons collide with the atoms and transfer energy to the atoms on their way through. One way of talking about this is to refer to the electrons being scattered by the atoms, deflected. If we deal with a hotter material, a hotter metal, the atoms are vibrating more and as the conduction electrons pass through there's a higher probability of a collision, there's more scattering of the electrons. So as the metal gets hotter there's increased thermal motion which makes electron collisions or scattering more likely more frequent. We can summarize up the stages involved. Increase thermal motion of lattice atoms if the metal gets hotter. Leads to increased number of collisions or increased scattering of the conduction electrons. That means there's an increased energy loss, energy transfer from electrons to the, to the atoms. That means increased resistance. If you wanted to keep the electrons moving as fast, we'd have to supply more energy, a higher voltage, to compensate. So, as the temperature gets bigger, the resistance gets bigger. How can we calculate resistance at a given temperature? Well, we need some starting information. We usually call the temperature at which the initial resistance value is given of something, we call that temperature the reference temperature T naught. And we usually have a reference temperature and the value of resistance at that temperature. And the resistance at the reference temperature is called R naught, the reference resistance. Note that R naught doesn't mean the resistance at naught degrees. It means the resistance at whatever the reference temperature is. And usually the reference temperature is 20 degrees C. That's a common practice. So, for example, we could write something like T0 is 20 degrees C, that's the reference temperature, and R0 is 0.42 ohms. So we've got something that has a resistance of 0.42 ohms at 20 degrees C. We also need some other information. We need what we call the temperature coefficient of resistance. And that's given a symbol alpha, Greek letter alpha. And this quantity depends on the material we're using. Different materials of different value of temperature coefficient of resistance. A word or two about alpha. If alpha is positive, the material is referred to as PTC, positive temperature coefficient. And that means the resistance increases as the temperature rises. When you learn about semiconductors, you'll find that some materials have a negative alpha. They're called NTC materials, negative temperature coefficient. And if it's negative, the resistance decreases as the temperature rises. <coughs> Excuse me. Alpha has units. Its units are degrees C to the minus 1 or Kelvin, K to the minus 1. And they're interchangeable. Some students get a bit confused. They think you have to add or take away 273 to convert centigrade to Kelvin. Well, you do. But if you're dealing in changes, then a change of 1 degree C is the same as a change of 1 Kelvin. If something is 1 degree C hotter, it's also 1 Kelvin hotter. So, because we're dealing in temperature changes, temperature differences, 
degrees C to the minus 1 is the same as Kelvin to the minus 1. Let's look at an example to see how we use these figures. For copper, the temperature coefficient of resistance, alpha, it's 0 0.0039 Kelvin to the minus 1. Let's suppose the resistance of a copper wire at 20 degrees C is 0.42 ohms. What we'd like to know is what is its resistance at 100 degrees C. We do this in two parts. We'll find the change of resistance going from 20 degrees to 100. And then once we know the change, we can add the change onto the original resistance, 0.42. Let's work out the change in resistance going from 20 to 100. We do this by multiplying the resistance at 20, 0.42 ohms, by the temperature change going from 20 to 100. The temperature change is therefore 100 minus 20. And multiplying all of that by alpha, the temperature coefficient of resistance, 0 0.0039. So we'd get 0.42 times 80 times 0 0.0039. Now 8t times 0 0.0039 is 0 0.312. So we've got 0.42 times 0 0.312. Now pause at that point to point something out. Multiplying something by 0 0.312 is the same as finding 31.2% of it. So what we're actually doing at this line is finding 31.2% of the original resistance at 20 degrees C. Where did we get 31.2%? Well, it's this fraction, 0 0.312. That comes from the number of degrees the temperature has changed multiplied by alpha. So the number of degrees change times alpha gives us this fraction. And that's a fraction of the original resistance that we're working out. 0.312 of 0.42 ohms is the same as 31.2%. That's what we're working out. And when we complete that, we find that fraction is 0.13 ohms. And that is a change in resistance. So the resistance at 100 degrees is simply the original resistance, 0.42, plus the change. That gives us 0.55 ohms. Now that's very important. If you understand that, you understand what alpha means and how it's used. So you might want to pause and just reread that screen to make sure you fully understand. Can we get a, a nice easy to use equation out of all of this? Well, yes, we can. Let's just summarize what we just did. We found the resistance was the original resistance, 0.42, plus the change. And the change was the original resistance times the temperature change times alpha. Let's look at that carefully. You'll see you can factorize 0.42 out. It's 0.42, open bracket, 1 plus temperature change times alpha. Now, let's put symbols instead of numbers. We've been working out the resistance, R. And that was equal to 0.42 was our reference resistance, resistance at the reference temperature 20. So I'll write R0, R0 there. The 1 and the plus are obviously the same. 100 minus 20, well, if we call the temperature we're interested in working out the resistance, call it T, that was 100, it's T minus a reference temperature. 100 minus 20 is T minus a reference temperature. And 0 0.0039 was alpha, the temperature coefficient of resistance. So we've got our formula. It's normally written with alpha in front of the temperature difference like this. R is R naught into 1 plus alpha temperature difference, T minus T naught. The formula works just as well for resistivity. So if you want to know the resistivity at some temperature, and you know the resistivity at a given temperature, R0 and T0, this works just the same. Plug in resistivity, rho, instead of the letter R. Take a look at that. OK, here's one for you to try. If you want to pause the video, get pen, paper and calculator, there's a 
realistic problem to try out. Let's read through it. For tungsten, the temperature coefficient of resistance alpha is 0.0044 Kelvin to the minus 1. A tungsten filament in the bulb, that's the old fashioned bulb, not one of the high efficiency ones, a tungsten filament in the bulb typically operates at 3000 degrees centigrade. If the filament has a resistance of 2.0 ohms at room temperature 20 degrees C, can you find its resistance during normal operation? So what's its resistance when it's at 3000 degrees C? There's a reminder of the formula you need. If you want to pause the video, you can do that for yourself. And here's my answer. There's the formula. Let's plug numbers in. We know the reference resistance is 2.0 ohms and the reference temperature is 20. So it's 2.0 into 1 plus alpha is 0.0044. We'll multiply that by the temperature change. We've gone from 20 degrees to 3000. That's the temperature difference of 2980. If we work all that out, it's 2.0 times 1 plus 13.1. That's 2 times 14.1. Near enough, 28 ohms. It's not an accurate calculation. So when the thing is operating, its resistance is 28 ohms, not 2 ohms. And you have to be very careful when you do calculations with things where the temperature changes. It can make a big difference. This filament bulb, the tungsten filament, does not obey Ohm's law. Its resistance is not constant. A word of warning though. Look at this formula that we used. I've written the alpha on the other side, makes no difference. It may not be accurate over large temperature ranges. If we plotted the graph of R versus T, we may not get a straight line and it's more noticeable over a large temperature range. So, in more advanced work, if you need to be more accurate, we could use an improved formula. Can you see what we've done here? The resistance, like before, is the reference resistance into 1 plus temperature difference times alpha. And then we've added an extra term, temperature difference squared times beta. And there could be other terms, temperature difference cubed times gamma. And these values of alpha, beta and gamma, they can be positive or negative values. Generally, beta will be much smaller than alpha. So that's a word of warning. You can't always trust this formula. It will work for metals over small temperature ranges OK, but don't believe it's always accurate. That was it. Can I remind you, if you want to find out about temperature effects on semiconductors and the very interesting topic of superconductivity, they're in separate parts. Thanks for watching.